Okay, let's move over here. What causes vitamin B2 deficiency? So the biggest thing on my list, you guys probably already know this, is gluten. And why does gluten cause vitamin B2 deficiency? Because it causes intestinal damage or inflammation, right? And if we're causing intestinal inflammation, we tend to get malabsorption and vitamin B2 is part of the part of that equation, right? So gluten-induced intestinal inflammation can create malabsorption, which can lead to riboflavin deficiency. You'll see here inflammatory bowel disease, which is, you know, we're talking about that one of the gluten-related ones. We got celiac, we've got ulcerative colitis, and then we've also got um, Crohn's. Crohn's disease, the three primary forms of inflammatory bowel disease can all contribute to uh, loss of nutrients. We know gluten can contribute to these three. So inflammatory bowel diseases we know can cause vitamin B2 deficiency. Another one is aggressive exercise. Aggressive exercise. Now when I say aggressive exercise, I'm not talking about those of you who like to you know, do a triathlon or those of you who like to go to the CrossFit gym and work out a little bit more than the average bear. I'm talking about those of you who overtrain, those of you who don't take enough rest, those of you who work and train your muscles to such a huge degree that you put yourself at risk for the development of deficiency. Remember, aggressive exercise increases the demand for nutrients and riboflavin being one of the most important regenerators. Another one of its functions that's important to understand is it regenerates glutathione. Now, raise your hand if you've heard of glutathione. Most of you have. Glutathione is the master antioxidant in the body, and vitamin B2 helps to regenerate it. Remember, glutathione is a lot like a cell phone battery. It can be recharged, but if you run out of battery and you don't have a charging cord, you're out of business. B2 is the charging cord for glutathione, so it's super important to regenerate your antioxidant status after exercise. We, we know, we've actually done research in athletes, and so we know that the two-a-day training for, you know, before football practice, the heavy, heavy weights, the super heavy, aggressive forms of exercise over long periods of time depletes the antioxidant status. And so that's going to tap into overutilization of your B2 trying to reduce the glutathione or trying to regenerate the glutathione for your body to be able to protect yourself from that excessive exercise. So aggressive exercise. Also hypothyroidism. What's interesting here, um, hypothyroid will, it's, it's actually, let me, let me reframe this because hypothyroid, there's actually two things. So we know hypothyroid can contribute to B2 deficiency, but we also know that B2 deficiency can contribute to hypothyroid. You have little mechanisms inside your thyroid cells that are, they're called syn porters. And what they do is they help the transfer of iodine into your thyroid where these transporters are vitamin B2 dependent. And so very, very important that you get adequate B2 for functioning of thyroid hormone. I've talked about that in depth in some of my thyroid videos. If you're not familiar, go back and watch them. Adrenal fatigue. We know that, that this is a big one. One of the reasons why is this has to do with cortisol. Cortisol depletes B vitamins. So long-term uh, abundance of cortisol being produced by your body as a result of chronic stress, which is what adrenal fatigue is. Adrenal fatigue is when you've been so stressed for so long, your adrenal glands, those little organs that sit on top of your kidneys, can no longer keep up with the level of stress. And so what happens, they become fatigued. But before that happens, they're burning through cortisol. They're trying to put out cortisol for you to protect you. But when you're doing that, it's depleting that vitamin B2. We also have alcohol. Now, alcohol is a big one. Uh, alcohol, aside from the fact that alcohol is a diuretic, right? So diuresis, when anytime we use any kind of diuretic with vitamin B2, we're talking about loss, right? Diuretic or diuresis increases the loss of vitamin B2. So it's not just alcohol. Think of caffeine or you're, you know, if you're a heavy coffee drinker and you're drinking three, four, five cups of coffee a day, that's diuretic. Alcohol is a diuretic. We also know alcohol and its impact on the liver and on glutathione status is going to cause you to use up more vitamin B2 again in that effort to regenerate. So you're getting double hit with alcohol, once as a diuretic, the other as a toxin that the liver has to process and deal with. So 
Again, any diuretics. So those of you, where's that important to understand? Any one of you listening to this, either you have aggressive caffeine intake or maybe you're on a medicine that acts as a diuretic to do a couple different things. Number one, diuretics are class of medication that are used to reduce blood pressure. So if you're taking uh, like hydrochlorothiazide or Lasix, um, these are examples of diuretics that will cause wasting of fluid through your kidney, right? So you'll basically your kidneys are pushing out more fluid, thus pushing out more vitamin B2 in your urine. So it's not the one day use of a diuretic, it's the consistent use over time that tends to lead to, in this case, diuretics lead to B vitamin deficiency. Now, some of you may be taking diuretics because your feet swell. Doctors will commonly prescribe this. I see this a lot with women. Their feet are swelling, their ankles are swelling, so their doctor puts them on a diuretic. Or they're retaining a lot of water, a lot of water retention in their hands and their feet and their face, and so their doctor puts them on a diuretic. This is a trap. The diuretic itself can lead to B2 deficiency, not just B2 deficiency, multiple vitamin and mineral deficiencies, and then those deficiencies can end up increasing or, or creating new problems for you. Another cause of B2 deficiency is high processed foods or a diet high in processed foods. Why? Because processed foods don't have adequate vitamin B2, but processed foods require that you use your B2, your stored B2. Remember, your body doesn't store a lot of vitamin B2. So developing B2 deficiency can happen relatively fast. Um, B2 not stored to any great degree in the body, okay? It's not, not that it's not stored at all, it's just not stored very well, okay? So if your diet is full of processed, processed food does not have vitamin B2, but processed food requires B2 to convert it into ATP. Remember I showed you that little biochemistry lesson earlier. We said that you need vitamin B2 to make ATP. Well, this happens, how do we break down food? Well, one of the things that we do when we're breaking down food is we're, is we're breaking hydrogen off of the food. So let me give you an example, glucose. When you need a lot of processed food, you get a lot of sugar and that glucose has hydrogen uh, hydrogen attached to it and so what your body tries to do is it tries to break off the hydrogen and then the FAD the riboflavin picks it up and becomes FADH and it delivers it to your cells to generate ATP well if your processed food that doesn't have any B2 and you don't store a lot of B2 then you're basically eating a processed food that you can't break down very well. So instead of breaking the hydrogen off the glucose, you're left with glucose. What do you do with extra glucose? What does your body do? Well, one of the things it does is it converts it to fat and it packs it into your cells, right? Or it turns it into triglycerides and stores it in your liver and your liver becomes fatty. So you don't want to go down this road. This is where processed foods are so horrible for us is they don't contain nutrients to any great degree. Now, some processed foods are fortified with certain vitamins, but their synthetic versions are not as effective, and the dosing or the quantity is not all that great to deal with all the quantity of processed foods that a person's eating. So this scenario is a bad deal. You don't want to get involved in it. And this is why I've always, you know, we've always harped on avoid packaged processed foods because they're not good for you. This is just one of many reasons why. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.